everyone. Welcome to day one of My Favorite Things Summer School 2020. I'm Carolyn, and I'm here today to talk about the design theory of the visual triangle and the part it plays in good card design. So the visual triangle is similar to the rule of thirds, except instead of dividing your project into nine equal parts, you draw an invisible triangle between three areas of emphasis. The visual triangle helps to guide the viewer's eye between each element, including your focal point. So today, I'm sharing a brand new project, as well as a few of my older projects, as examples of the visual triangle in the card design process. For my project today, I pulled out the Happy Hummingbird stamp set, and I placed the hummingbird images in a triangle shape on my card base. I'm inking the images up with some black pigment ink because I want to heat emboss them with clear embossing powder. But before I do that, I've trimmed a piece of masking material the same size as my A2 card base, and I'll place that into my MISTI exactly where I had placed my card base. I'll re-ink the images using black licorice hybrid ink, and I'll give the MISTI lid a good rub to make sure the hybrid ink transfers to the masking material. This masking material is my favorite because it's so durable and can sometimes be used more than once. But most ink resists on this stuff, so stamping on it is a bit tricky. The MFT Hybrid ink works well, especially if I carefully heat set it before moving forward. I've grabbed my detail scissors and I'm carefully trimming out each of the hummingbird images from the masking material. In hindsight, it probably would have been easier to create a separate mask for each hummingbird and then masked off any exposed areas with post-it tape. So I've limited the video time of me fussy cutting the hummingbirds out to just one so that I don't lose you from boredom. You're welcome. And before the pigment dries on my card base, I'll sprinkle clear detail embossing powder onto the inked up images and heat set it off camera. Now that the three hummingbirds are cut away from the masking material, I'll use what I have left as a reverse mask. I want to do some ink blending on the hummingbirds, so I need to cover up the areas where I don't want to get ink. I removed the backing sheet from the masking material and I'm adhering it to the card base. This is when I realized that it would have been easier to have individual masks for each hummingbird. But with a little bit of patience and persistence, I make what I have work so that I can move on to the next step. I added a few pieces of post-it tape to cover areas that got missed with my reverse mask. And now I can start my ink blending. I started with some Summer Splash dye ink, and I'll blend that over the first hummingbird with my ink blending brush. I'm laying down a pretty light application of the ink to add color, but not overwhelm the image. And then I'll use a fingertip blending brush to add some Razzleberry dye ink on the hummingbird's belly, tail, and wings. I love how natural ink blending looks. And for me, it's so much easier than coloring with alcohol markers. For my next hummingbird, I'll lay down a light layer of lemon drop dye ink all over the image. And then come in with another fingertip brush to blend some limelight dye ink on the belly, tail, and wings. I went over the body a second time with a lemon drop just to add a bit more vibrance to the image. And again, the versatility of ink blending was helpful in that it's sometimes better to start out light and add more color later. And for my last hummingbird, I'm applying a light layer of Razzleberry dye ink to the body, and I'll come in with my fingertip blending brush and some lemon drop for the belly, tail, and wings. And now I can carefully pull off all of the masking material to reveal my three colored images. The magic of this never gets old for me. Next, I've placed a panel of black licorice cardstock into my mini MISTI, and I'm covering the bottom portion with my anti-static bag. I've inked up one of the sentiments from the Essential Sentiment stamp set, after some careful stamp surgery, with some Sweet Tooth pigment ink. I'll sprinkle some white detail embossing powder over the ink sentiment, and I'll heat emboss it and trim it into a strip off camera. I die cut the word hello three times from black licorice cardstock using the little hello dynamics and I'm adhering the three layers together using my liquid glue pen. Liquid glue is my favorite adhesive for this kind of technique because it gives me a little wiggle room to make sure that the layers are adhered evenly before the glue sets. And by having three die cut layers, it adds some beautiful dimension to what is otherwise a one layer card. I'll apply one last coat of liquid glue to the back of the assembled die cut and I'll adhere that to the card base to the left center area where the beaks of the hummingbirds point. 
Do you see my visual triangle and how it draws the eyes to the focal area of the sentiment die cut? Now I'll adhere the sentiment strip to the card base using some mini foam squares. As I mentioned before, the visual triangle is composed of three similar elements to draw the eye towards the focal area. And this can also be used when placing any kind of embellishment to a card, like I'm doing here with some sparkling clear sequins. I've carefully placed the sequins using three different sizes so that they enhance the images, but they're in a triangle formation. Yes, it's not a perfect triangle, but a triangle of some sort. Geometry was never my forte, but I do know what a triangle looks like. So we've got a visual triangle in the formation of the hummingbirds and two other visual triangles using the sequins. Are you ready to try out this visual triangle design theory for yourself and have the chance to win some prizes? As a summer school student, you have three ways to win. To be eligible to win a $25 voucher, complete today's homework and upload an image via InLinks on today's blog post. Winners will be chosen randomly from each day's InLinks entries. To be eligible to win a $15 voucher, subscribe to our YouTube channel and comment on today's video. Winners will be chosen randomly from comments on the YouTube video. To be eligible to win the $100 grand prize, graduate from summer school by completing all five days of homework via the end links on each blog post. One random winner will be chosen for the week. And that'll do it for today's Summer School 2020 lesson. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you learned something new about design theory and that you'll join us all week for more summer school fun.